Hello and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to our hip dislocation prevention educational video. I'm really excited you're here to join us. My name is Kelly Schneider. I am the Restore Program Coordinator for Hill Country Memorial. I may have already had the privilege of meeting some of you as you've come through our Restore Program and had your hip replaced. For those of you tuning in for the first time in prevention and preparation for surgery, I'm really excited you're here to join us. As part of the Restore team, we at Hill Country Memorial provide comprehensive care from your doctor's office all the way to your home. We encourage you to save this video, to re-watch this video, and tune in anytime you need any tips in preventing that new hip from dislocating. At this time, I'm going to introduce you to Carol Johnson. She is the Director of Therapy Services for our home care team. Her and her team will be helping guide you through how to be safe in your home to prevent a hip dislocation. Hi, I'm Carol Johnson and uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the precautions that you're going to have after your hip surgery. Uh, these are very important uh, because what we're trying to prevent is we want, we want you to have a good healing process and not have any difficulty with any complications like dislocations. What we're gonna talk about today is universal hip precautions, not attentive to whether you had an anterior approach or whether you had a posterior approach, but just in general, how can we keep you safe? Because if you follow precautions like this, it greatly reduces your chances of having any kind of dislocation. Uh, one is that we want you to keep your hip angle at 90 degrees, a right angle or more, okay? We do not want you to bend forward from the 90 degree angle. We do not want you sitting in any surface that would reduce the angle in this way. It needs to be at 90 degrees or more in order to keep you uh, safe in that way. Another precaution is that we do not want you to roll your leg too far out or too far in. Too far out or too far in. Um, because those also could cause potential problems. We don't want you crossing your legs, even at the ankles, like that. Anything that brings, we're, we're sticking with the right leg for the purpose of this video, but anything that brings this leg in from a straight down position could be potentially harmful to you. Out is okay in is not okay. So we want it straight down or out, okay? And so we want you to think about how to incorporate these into your daily life in order to avoid any type of injury. For instance, in the past, um, if you will think about this with me, I said not to roll your leg too far in or too far out. In a long time ago, I had a lady that was standing in the shower taking a bath, and if you will watch my right leg, she was standing in the shower taking a bath, she left that leg planted, and she turned to get the soap. You see what happened with the leg? How her leg didn't move, but she turned to get the soap. So how should she have done it instead? She should have made small steps if she wanted to turn rather than a major turn that would involve that much rotation of her hip. I had a man one time that was sitting in his chair and he dislocated because he leaned over to pick up something from the floor. What happens with this angle? Okay, you're decreasing your, this angle to way less than 90 degrees if you're leaning over like this. Okay, the other precaution that we haven't talked about yet is hip extension. And what I mean by that is we don't want the leg to go backwards beyond a straight down position from your hip. Like uh, if you were taking a step backwards, pretending it's my right leg that I had surgery with, I don't want to take a step back with my right leg first. If I was going to back up, I want to back up with my left leg first and then back up with my left leg first, okay? Um, another place that that could come into play is that if you were lying on the bed 
you would not want to move over to the edge of the bed and drop your leg off of the bed and then sit up. You would want to sit up and then move your leg off the bed. Otherwise, it's not usually a big problem except in those two areas and um, it's not a difficult one to avoid, but I did think it was worth mentioning. I had another person one time that was lying in bed, sticking with the right leg here. This person wanted something that was on the left side of his bed, so he simply rolled over to get what was on the right side of his bed. And of course, what did that do? It caused the angle of the hip to go into this position, we call it an adducted position, beyond neutral, and that caused him to dislocate. Now, I can't tell you you're gonna have a dislocation. I have also known people to do absolutely everything wrong and nothing happened. So I can't tell you that. All I can tell you is that we have seen incidences where dislocations have occurred, even though it's rare, and we don't want you to be one of these. We want to keep you safe. So the purpose of this video is to show you how you can take these precautions and incorporate them into your normal daily activities so you can think it out and you can decide what's safe for you and what's not. Okay, we've now arrived at your home and we're going to have Monty Kennedy and Charles demonstrate how to get out of, out of the car and how to work your way into your house. All right. So at the hospital, you already have the seat pulled all the way back and even recline so that we keep those precautions. We don't want to bend forward too much. We'll say it's the right hip to start with. So as he's coming out, he's leading with that right hip. Careful not to bend forward and bringing the right hip out, leading with it each time. So when you're ready, go ahead and start with this right leg, bringing it out here towards the threshold. There you go, and then bringing that left one around. We want to slide forward and get both feet touching the floor. We want to check for dizziness, make sure he's not lightheaded. Don't get up just yet. We'll have the walker out and ready in front of him. And again, you, wanna, you don't want to bend forward, you want to come as straight up as possible and make that good leg, that left leg, do most of the work standing. Mm. There you go. Careful, we have loose rocks. Okay, if it's the left leg, we want to be careful not to cross midline. Still mm. don't want to lean forward. So we'll come out with that right leg first and being careful not to let this left leg come up across midline. So if you'll lead with this right one and come out, it's nice and easy. Might even need a little help with this left one. We'll slide it out, come to the edge, try to get that right foot on the floor first, and maybe just take a second before you stand. Make sure you got your bearings. We'll have the walker in front. Remember, don't lean forward too much. Try to come straight up. Great job. Then you'll take your time and head for the house. So as we're coming to the house, we have some loose gravel. It's not real smooth and level. You try to do the best you can. Lean on that walker some. And, and as the coach can just kind of stand by and, and help as needed with the walker. So take your time. Let's aim for that first step and see how it goes up there. Try to get as close to that step as you can with the walker even with your feet, and then we'll put all four legs of that walker up on that step. And then we're gonna step up with the good leg, which is that left leg. So when you're ready, go ahead and step up with that stronger leg, the left leg, and go right up on that step. And then we're heading for the, the house. As we're coming up to get into the house, we have two steps, which will be a little bit different than the one. Because this walker won't fit on that step, we'll need to make a little bit more room and so we'll move this potted plant temporary just to have it out of the way. We'll turn that walker sideways and get up a little bit closer. The, the right leg is the hip he had replaced. So you'll take the left hand on that walker. And if there's a railing, use that railing. It's most sturdy. If not, the coach can be in here. 
on the right side and just guard as you step up with that left leg we'll come to this step and then now we can bring that walker up in front and take the step just one at a time like we did earlier leading with the left leg the non-operative leg and then up and we're in the house Got one more step just to get into the house you'll come as close to that step as you can even come into that walker a little bit get your feet closer lift that walker up and try to get all four legs on something sturdy so it doesn't have to go all the way across we can keep it as close as possible and still keep the legs on something level and smooth our stronger leg that non-operative left is the one we'll step up with and step into that and then immediately we have to watch out for that rug and so you'll just make some careful steps and make sure that it doesn't get caught up in the walker Okay, now that we're inside the house, we want to show you some difficulties that could occur with uh, tripping hazards within the home. I want to introduce you to Chris Valentine, who is a physical therapist, and this is Charles. Charles, let's talk about tripping hazards. As you recover from your hip surgery, you're going to find you have decreased foot clearance on that side that was operated on. What I mean by that is due to your pain and weakness, you're gonna have trouble lifting that leg up. So this rug is a perfect example of what we're talking about here. So go ahead and walk on this as best you can and see, let's see what happens here. Now, as you see, <laughs> stop. It has a t potential to bunch up on you. So this is a perfect example of a tripping hazard and this would be uh, a fall risk. So let's get you back up out of the way here, and we're gonna straighten out this rug and talk about what our options are. It looks like this rug could easily be rolled up and removed. So that would be my recommendation to you. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed. So we're gonna walk over here to the threshold area. Okay, here we have a couple of additional examples of tripping hazards. Come on through, let me show you. So now, number one, we have an obstacle here on our right, and number two, we have another throw rug on our left. So this isn't an example of a throw rug that we could actually roll up and remove. So what I would suggest is if you have some duct tape in the house, we could just or you can use mine. We can take this duct tape and we can just tape down the edges. <laughs> All we would have to do is to tape down the edges so that it's not going to curl up under the toe that you have trouble lifting up. You've got your weak side from your hip surgery, which would make it difficult for you to avoid tripping on this throw rug. Now the other example of a uh, tripping hazard is this basket here. So you wanna be mindful of keeping pathways clear. So when we come through here, we're definitely gonna to wanna to put this someplace else. And we can continue to tape around the edge of the skin. So let's go ahead and walk through here. Now we've got our pathway clear. We've taped down the edge of our throw rug, minimizing our tripping hazard and making you safer. We have another example of a tripping hazard, and it's all about fall prevention. You have that decreased foot clearance on your surgical side due to your weakness and your pain, of course. But what we have here is a threshold that you may not even notice a difference in the height. So I'm coming back to this tape here. This duct tape might give you a better visual on the difference in the height of the transition at the threshold. So we'll just put some of this down just to make it more visible. We'll put a piece so it really stands out. Put a piece here and we'll put a piece over here. All right, now, now that that's more visible, we run into the additional challenge of an obstacle in your pathway. 
Again, this is all about fall prevention. We want to keep pathways clear so that you don't have an unfortunate fall. So let's do this. Let's clear our pathway. And make sure that your walker can get through here. The threshold is much more visible now. So come on up and then see if we can walk through this area here between the stairwell and the chair. Now we're going to have Matt Parsons and Charles are going to show you things about seating surfaces, places to sit in your home, and how to think about your hip precautions while you're deciding what is a good place and what is not a good place to sit in your home. This is very important. I know we get used to our normal chairs that we really like and we want to return to that position, but this is one time that we need to think that out. And for a short time, we may have to choose a different chair than we normally sit in while we're doing uh, during the healing period. So we're gonna let them show you what's good and not good about places to sit. So this is a typical setup you might find in a patient's house. So what you would look for in the chair is something that, keeping those hip precautions in mind, when you sit in it, your, your knee is not going above your hips. You're not breaking that right angle at the hip. Um, so since our patient is on the taller side, this is probably going to be too low for him. So um, something you could do is add a cushion or some, get a taller chair, something to raise it up a little bit. Um, also, it would be best to have armrests so that when you stand, you can push up on something rather than, than having to lean forward to stand. Um, so in this case, since he's at the table, um, you can push up from the chair. So you would scoot to the kind of the edge of your seat, bring your feet back, and then use your arms to stand. That way you're not, you're not bringing your knee above, above that hip. So, um, so this would not be a good chair for our patient, um, but I'm gonna have him come and kind of demonstrate, um, since he hasn't actually had the hip replacement, I'll have him demonstrate kind of how you would get in and out, um, assuming this was a taller chair. So we'll bring our patient in. So we'll have him, yes. So go to the front, and then you kind of back up to the chair so you're not twisting. And then use that, that armrest, and then you just sit like that. So if you look at it from the side, he's right kind of borderline at that 90 degrees. So, um, so this actually works, but getting in and out is where he's going to potentially break those hip precautions, having to lean forward or bending when he sits down. So here we have a chair that's on the lower side, so again, just to show what to look for in a chair and what to avoid. Um, since he hasn't had a hip replacement, he's just our, our sample patient. We're gonna have you go ahead and sit and we'll show that this is not gonna be acceptable for somebody after a hip surgery. Because if you can tell on the camera, that angle, his knee is, is way past that 90 degree mark. It's way too tall or way too high. Um, so this is definitely a, a no-no. This is definitely a chair to avoid. Now, some people have just their favorite chair or an electric recliner that they can't get away from necessarily. So a couple of options is um, to raise it, like build a platform. It's usually like a four inch platform that has a two by fours and plywood usually uh, to lift the whole chair up taller. Um, that can be an option, or if it's, depending on the chair and the, the individual circumstances, some people will be able to add pillows or cushions just to build up the seat height to raise it so that he's not breaking the seat precautions. Uh, but in this case, this chair is just, is just far too low. So no matter what he does, other than that platform, um, 
that's, that's just going to be too low and he's not going to be able to sit there without breaking those hip precautions. So now we're going to have you stand up and see when you stand up, he really has to lean forward and those knees are really, you can really see how exaggerated that, that is on, on that angle. So that's just as an example, this we added three pretty thick pillows to this chair and then we're going to have our patient sit on it again and just to show you that even with all these these pillows and all that cushioning, once it sinks down, once it compresses, that chair is still still too low. Um, so this chair, the only way you can make this chair a viable option would be to build up like a platform to set the whole chair on. Okay, so here we have a couch. This couch is a little more firm and it doesn't sink down as much as the seat we were on before. So we're gonna do two versions. We're gonna show without any pillows or cushioning. So we'll have our, our patient go ahead and have a seat. You wanna kick that leg out in front of you. There you go. See, so that was a hard hard landing and it's still pretty low. And then when he, when he gets up, we'll have you go ahead and stand up now. So now it's really hard and that's really low. And it's, it's, he can't, he's not able to maintain those hip precautions. And so now if we add a couple of pillows, and these are pretty firm pillows, they're the, the foam type. So now, same thing, we're bring that leg out. So going down, much softer landing, and he was able to maintain those hip precautions. And then now getting up, And, just for the, and as the caregivers or whoever's being the coach can give him a little boost, like when he's, if he's having a hard time getting up or if he's maybe just in pain or weak from the surgery, you can give a little boost just on the back or a gate belt or like grabbing like the belt of, of his pants um, just to kind of give him that extra little oomph to, to make it the rest of the way up, maintaining those hip precautions. Here we have a simulated recliner or rocking chair. Um, so the trouble with these is that when you rock forward, that breaks the hip precautions. So you can see like if, it's, if this knee is bent, like if this is this replaced hip, that knee would be bent higher than that 90 degree threshold that we're looking for. Um, some also swivel. So just like Carol was talking earlier on the hip precautions, if, you, if that hip swivels, even if you're not moving your leg, if you turn your body, that's still breaking those precautions because that the excessive rotation. Um, so a way you can mitigate the, the movement of the chair is we're gonna show you in a minute how you can, how you can put something underneath the rockers to stop it from moving so much and make it more stable. Um, so that could be a brick or something that has some weight to it. That'll be the most stable or just something that's, that's gonna stop that movement, like two by fours, a big book, I mean, uh, anything that you have that you can just place underneath that, that rocking mechanism. So in this example, we have a rocking chair, and just to show you how you can make it more stable, is I just have a spare piece of sandstone, or you can use a brick, or a book, or whatever you have laying around, and so I'm just gonna slide it underneath the rail, I've already done the other side. And so that's gonna make it much more steady. It's not rocking at all really. It's just kind of wobbling right there because it's down. So this way you can sit there and it's not gonna move. So you can get up and down a lot more safely, a lot safer uh, and not have it wobble or um, not break those same precautions. So we've shown you a lot of what to avoid and how to modify chairs, but what you would be looking for in a good chair or the ideal chair would be a straight back chair that's not on wheels or rockers or anything like that. That's just stable, that you can um, sit in with a has armrest to push up from. And ideally you want the height to come kind of just a couple inches above your knee that way when you sit, you're not breaking 90 degrees at the, the hip joint.
So now we're going to have our occupational therapist, Nicole Winnicky, is going to teach how to use uh, dressing adaptive devices to help Charles get dressed. After hip replacement surgery, we know our patients need to follow standard hip precautions. So in order to get dressed, these adaptive devices are necessary. So they're all different types of long handled devices that are necessary after hip replacement surgery. Uh, these are the ones that, that I've used through the years. They're affordable and they're functional, but you can certainly research and search online and find the adaptive devices that work best for you. This is a dressing stick. It works well to hook your pants, to pull your pants on, push your pants off. Mr. Meyer is uh, going to take off his shoe. He can use the dressing stick or just slip it on off. He slipped it on off there. He's using the dressing stick to get his sock off and being aware of his hip precautions. Here's the reacher. Again, there are many different types of reachers. This is the one that, that we historically use here at Hill Country Memorial. You might need to use this to push it off even better. Okay, so you got that. Reacher is handy. This is a sock aid to get the socks on. Again, online, there are many different types of sock aids. There's one that's terry cloth and it's soft and a lot of people prefer that. But many different ones online if you'd like to shop around and find one that works well for you. But this is how this one works. The sock pulls on there like that. Works with just about any type of sock, even nylons. So you get it all the way on. And then he's gonna demonstrate how to pull on his sock. Remembering his hip precautions. precautions, no bending over, no crossing the legs, no turning the toes inward. So he's keeping those in mind while he uses these adaptive devices. Perfect. Perfect. This is the, uh, oh, now we'll put on the shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where that tool comes in. <laughs> so again, just being aware of his hip precautions. No bending over, no crossing the legs, no turning the toes inward. So, yay! It takes a little practice to use the adaptive devices, but this is how you'll be able to get dressed independently. Now Pamela and Charles are going to demonstrate how to negotiate spaces in the bathroom, how to get to shower chairs, and how to get to and from toilets safely. So the first concern that we want to address is if you have to enter a space with a narrow opening and the wheels are positioned on the outside of the walker to where it's more difficult, uh, you can do a simple fix by changing the wheels to the inside of the walker. And it just involves switching sides and making sure that you put it in the same notch. We are in the fourth hole. And then the walker will easily fit through the narrow doorway. Okay, now we're gonna talk through how to negotiate a narrow bathroom to the uh, tub chair. So, you have to walk forward with your feet pointing in the direction that you're walking all the time. And since we have a narrow space here where the toilet and the tub bench are near one another, you'll have to take small steps and put the walker over the toilet and keep taking small steps so that there's no pivoting to where then you're at the position to be able to sit down back to the tub bench. Okay, Charles, if you just want to walk through, slowly through the bathroom, and then slowly turn your walker, and make sure you don't pivot on that foot over the toilet. Okay, and then uh, before you sit down, uh, kick your right leg out, and then reach back to the tub bench. Open to, don't bend past that 90 degrees. 
and then scoot back all the way on the bench. Okay, and then go lift your leg into the tub. There you go. Okay, and then you can scoot over that way. Okay, and then we'll get your other leg into the tub. Okay, so go ahead and take this leg out since this is your not operated leg and scoot to the edge of the bench. And then I'll reach in and help you get this leg out. And turn and down. And then you can slowly turn back to face your walker. Put one hand on the walker and stand straight up from your seating position. Try not to bend over. There you go. Lower toilet and sitting down on it to toilet would have you bend too far. We have a couple of options to make it a higher seat. This is very easy. You can get a elevated toilet seat with grab bars that elevates the height of the seat to where that when you sit, you can keep that 90 degree angle. Another option is a bedside commode frame. We've just removed the bowl of the commode and have the frame sitting over the toilet. It gives you elevated height and grab bars and it's adjustable. And just a few considerations. We've already talked about standing up and sitting down. It's best to reach back and kick that right foot forward and sit down. And then you have to remember while you're toileting, you cannot reach forward to grab things in front of you. That violates the 90 degree precaution. So something like this where the toilet paper is right here is acceptable. And then it's also best when you're performing hygiene with toileting, you have to stand up, straight up, and then it's best to do it in a standing position to not violate those precautions. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the bathroom. Oh, it looks like that rug is a little slippery. It doesn't have a no-slip surface, so because that's not a safe rug to perform a transfer, we're gonna go ahead and remove it. Go ahead, Charles. We're gonna walk into the bathroom. Bring your walker, uh, so let's walk and let's put your right foot inside the shower. Keep a hold on the walker and do little steps. Okay, and sit straight down. Try not to bend too much. And now you can scoot over and then put your left foot into the shower. And it, this way you can reach everything. You can reach your soap. You don't have to twist. But let's remember that you cannot bend over to wash your feet. So that is a point where you need a long handled sponge or someone to help you wash those areas that require you to be able to bend down. Okay, now that your shower is done, we're going to come on out. So go ahead and bring that left foot out and then scoot forward a little bit. Try not to turn that foot and now push up from the back of the chair, uh, back here behind you and your walker and I'll hold on. There you go. Good. And then step out. Now, Maddie Fleming and Charles are going to demonstrate activities in the kitchen, laundry, and other things around the house that you might need to be able to do safely. All right, so when talking about safety in the kitchen, there are a few things to remember. First, I wanna talk about when you have your walker and you're gonna to walk to the refrigerator, for example, we don't need to pivot or twist. So a good rule of thumb is to keep your nose in line with your toes. So Mr. Charles, when he turns to go to the refrigerator, he's going to take small steps to head towards the refrigerator. So let's go ahead and do that. Good. Okay, head to the refrigerator. All right, so he's gonna open the refrigerator door, small, steps in a circle. Good. And then he's not going to pivot and put it over on the countertop. He's going to take small circles. There you go. Small steps in a circle. Okay. All right. So our patient is coming in and he's walking over a rug right now um, that really needs to be pulled up just for safety. So we're going to pause and pick up the rug. Okay. So now that our rug is picked up, it's safe for our patient to walk over to the dishwasher. Nice and slow. Good. He's making sure 
up for pivot or twist. So this is the reacher. With the reacher, he's going to open the dishwasher just to maintain those 90 degrees. to be able to do laundry while being safe is using our reacher. So our patient will demonstrate scooting up to the washer and using the reacher to grab a washcloth. So this way he doesn't have to bend over. He's able to grab it, good. To open the dryer, you can bend down to open the door. You're not breaking your 90 degree precautions. And then you can use the reacher. Good, to put the item in the dryer. And then we can close it with our hand. And then also make sure after the clothes are dry to use the reacher to pull out uh, the clothes. And then it would be nice to have a laundry basket either on top of the dryer or on a rolling cart and then to place right into the basket. All right, so we're gonna let our dog in. So we just wanna be very cautious about when we are around our pets that we don't accidentally trip over them. We wanna prevent falls. Okay, all right, and then also to pick up an empty dog bowl, we can use our reacher, um, but then of course to set a dog bowl back down to feed the dog or water the dog, you would have to have help to do that. Okay, as you get better in advance, you'll go from the walker to the use of a cane. Uh, usually a straight cane like this, which is adjustable in height. As far as adjusting the height of the cane, this will be done um, probably assisted by either your home care therapist or your outpatient therapist. Uh, one way that you can know how to adjust the cane is that if you drop your arm down at your side, it goes about two fingers above the bend in the wrist you want about a 30 degree bend. So if you look at this cane and you see from the side, this cane is set too tall for me. Um, but as it is probably adjusted to our uh, patient over here, to Charles, I'm gonna leave it where it is. But this is a little bit too tall for me. When you're using a cane, if your right leg has had surgery, the cane will go on your left side. That's the normal way and when you walk, you're going to move the cane and the left leg together. The cane and the left leg together, okay? Just to demonstrate a couple of steps, cane and the left leg together, since we're showing it from a right hip perspective. 
Okay, now we're going to advance to going up the stairs. We would not recommend that you do this in the beginning because your leg is weak. So hopefully when you first come home, you'll have a bedroom downstairs that you can use uh, because we don't want to take a chance on your leg buckling when you're going up or down the stairs that could result in a fall. So we're going to go up the stairs. This particular set of stairs has one railing. If it has two, then you can use the railings on both sides. This has one. So what we're gonna do is hold to the railing and, and use the cane. So what you're going to do is you're gonna to hold to the railing, hold to the cane. You're gonna step up with your non-surgical, the leg that didn't have surgery. It goes up first, and then you hold the railing and the cane. The non-surgery leg goes up first. Okay, now let's let you try it. Step up with your left. Coach can guard from the back just to make sure that you're safe in going up the stairs, at least until you get used to it. Coach would guard from the downside if I was going to guard him coming down the stairs. Kane goes down first, then the surgery leg, and then the good leg. Okay, now Charles and I are going to demonstrate when you come home from the hospital, how would you get in and out of your bed and, and different options for positioning in the bed to help you be comfortable after you've had hip surgery. We're gonna show you this on a low bed and then we're going to show you how to get into a high bed. Okay, let's come around the corner. Turn with your walker. Now back up until you feel the bed behind your legs. Reach back with one hand for the bed before you sit down. Okay, good job. We do have to consider the height of the bed. Sometimes some people will be tall and they'll need bed risers under the bed in order to make their bed high enough that it would be safe. Okay, now I want you to get into the bed what we're going to do here is I want you to lift this leg and I'm going to help you with your weak leg. Okay, bring that one up and now I'm going to bring this one up. Now, bend your knee and let's scoot your hips over a little bit. Okay, there you go. Now we're going to straighten out your legs. And it's going to be really important in the beginning to not cross your legs as we said earlier, not even at the ankles. And it can be a good reminder in some cases to put a pillow between your knees to remind you to not cross your legs. Otherwise, when you're asleep, you might not notice. Now, um, if you wanted to roll onto your side, because laying on your back all the time can be really tiring and people get really uncomfortable in the same position. So you can take this pillow, bend up your knees a little bit, just bend your knee a little bit, bend your knee, and put your foot right there. Bring this one up, put your foot right there. Let's position this pillow. Now roll onto your side. Okay, now what we want to look at, what we want to look at from the back is we want his position from his hip to his knee to be level or the knee a little bit higher than the hip. And in this case, that is the situation. His knee is a little bit higher than his hip. So this pillow is sufficiently large for him. If the hip was still, if the knee was still dropping down a little bit, he might require two pillows in order to be correctly positioned on his side. I would not lie on the right, on the surgery side immediately when you come home. Okay, I want to show you why if it's your right hip 
It's a little bit easier and safer if you sleep on the right side of the bed. If you were to, um, if it was my left leg and I was getting in bed this way, as I'm turning to get in the bed, if you watch my hip position, it's almost as if this leg is crossed. So let's say that, see, if you see that hip position, that can be a problem, okay? When I get out of bed, same thing. This leg comes out, but then this leg crosses over, which can simulate crossing your legs. So that can be potentially a, a bit of a problem. Now, we don't wanna cause any divorces, so if that would be a, a real issue that you cannot change sides of the bed, perhaps your coach can help you with lifting that leg and keeping that leg out to the side when you get up into the bed so that that doesn't happen. I have seen it done where people were able to accomplish it without crossing, but you have to be much, much more careful. Another option that you can do is switch ends of the bed instead of the head of the bed being up here. You can put your pillow on the other end, which could simulate getting in from the opposite side of the bed if that was a real area of difficulty. Okay, tall beds can be a bit of a challenge when you have had a recent hip surgery and you're trying to get in and out of bed. It also depends on the height of your bed. Um, they're very popular right now, but if you're somebody like me, if you can see that me trying to get into this bed would be pretty difficult. So if you have a type of a, a small type of step like this, the step can be used to make the height um, a little more to where you can ne negotiate it more easily. Uh, Charles and I are going to show you how to use this step for getting in and out of bed. Turn him back up toward the bed. Now you're going to step up with your not the leg that didn't have surgery, your strong leg. Step up with that, a little further over onto the, there you go. All right, now bring this walker closer, reach back for the, reach back for the bed, and sit down. Very good. And then otherwise you would just get into bed just like we showed you on the other bed. Getting out of bed, same thing, we come up to the to the side of the bed, push up from here and here, stand. Okay, step off with this leg, move the walker a little bit, step off with the other leg, okay. If you don't have a coach at home, you're home alone, your leg is weak, you have difficulty getting your leg into and out of bed, it could take a few days until your leg is strong enough that you would be able to do that. Uh, there are such things you could request, something that's called a leg lifter that you can hook over your foot and uh, pull with your arms to help lift your leg up into the bed. Um, some people have also used sheets. Leg lifters work a little bit better. Um, and in this video, I thank you for taking the time to watch it. There's no possible way that we can cover every scenario that could occur. But our goal in completion of this videos is to give you some things to think about. That if you are thinking about keeping your hip angle at greater than 90 degrees, if you're thinking about not rotating your leg in or out too far, not extending beyond a neutral position, and not crossing your legs or going into any position that simulates crossing your legs, it should help you to stay safer and reduce your risk of dislocating your hip. If you uh, have any needs, um, don't hesita hesitate to call Hill Country Memorial Home Care Agency, 830-997-1336. We have somebody available at all times that can take your call. Thank you.